we're at 3-1. And I have decided, as we are potentially on a, a, a game winner, that there are going to be no rules. Oh. So you just oh. get to play Heroes of the Storm. Yay. That's it. Nice. Well, if we do that the next three games, I mean, they don't have a chance. we got to switch it up. Okay, so I, I, well, you got to get through this one. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what we got lined up next. But, yep, that's, that's going to be the rules. So enjoy your game of Heroes of the Storm, guys. Okay. Oh, I always do. <laughs> Mutant's favorite game, actually. Ooh, ooh. Love the shit. Love of Heroes of the Storm. This verse. I'm leaving. Bye, Moon, my favorite Heroes of the Storm streamer. Yeah, Trey. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> just just so wholesome between everyone. Uh, the Red, thank you for the 100 bits uh, adding to the price yeah. pool right there. Okay, so <laughs> we are going to be heading into uh, Dragonshire. Uh, so we find out if the teams are ready. And we can get going. I think Leon has is, is, uh, got the crown on the side. Okay, I think we've got readies to go from both sides. I'm just, I'm just, I'm reeling to get into this one. All right, here we go. I'm pushing the buttons. We can get going into Dragonshire for go. number four. And we're getting to a pretty standard map here. I mean, it's nothing crazy. The, 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 the basis of Heroes of the Storm, right? Dragonshire. Just can't get more simpler than this. Mm -hmm. So the, the nice thing I like about Dragonshire is you often do see a really strong 1v1 in the top lane uh, between something like a Rexar, Dahaka, you have Urel, you've got Malfiel, you've got the Orc. So that 1v1 in top lane is always really interesting to me. But then the other thing to consider is the roaming assassin. So something like a Zeratul, Maiev, those are really, really popular heroes on this map. Genji actually used to be a massive pick on this map because of his ability to get the Swift Strike in the lane, jump in there and get some burst damage onto an enemy hero. But Genji's fallen to the wayside. Maev's kind of a little bit more impactful with the Umbra Bind being able to control things. So um, I'm expecting to see some some strong uh, solo lane matchups, but we're also going to be probably seeing some some bursty high mobility assassins like that Zeratul, like that Maev. That's at least what I'm expecting. I don't know about you. Uh, anything we see, you we, see the, we see the standard right now, the Tracer ban, the Urel ban, uh, even the Malganus ban. I, 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 I like on this map at least having one character that can like you were suggesting, like kind of open up the map, right? A little bit of mobility. Like you typically see that as a Maev or even a Genji, as we saw in our in-house games on Monday. Um, you know, just just a character that can get around the map and kind of have a presence everywhere while it's kind of not having a presence anywhere. Um, it, it's like you need that to change the flow of the map, right? Without it, you tend to just, you, you know, as one person does this, the other person does that. So I like to see that out of these out of these teams, you know, or the globals. The globals are always just really, really strong on this map. And we see a Greyman opener, really standard, that's, great that's at doing a, camps, good at pushing. That, yeah, that's a little bit of a sweaty open, though. I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> Ana's still up and available. Joanna's still up and available. ETC, Garrett, like there's so Garage, many like, things yeah. that you often do see prioritized in first pick. But a Greyman, they're just like, we want aggression. Uh, Zovix, thank you for the 200 bits, my friend. We really appreciate that adding to the prize pool. Is a gray, excuse me, a Garrosh and Malfurion on the right hand side. Joanna and, to uh, counter the Garrosh. There you go. Wait, didn't didn't I hear during CCL that Kai did not like Malfurion, or is that changed in the past like week or? That has changed. Okay, I production think Kai has been okay. spamming. I remember, like, I, I I said like I said something during CCL, and production was just like, oh, she's been she's been off that. I was like, oh, I, I missed that. And then I just see it, and I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. But okay, so they are going to be back on Malfurion, but we do have that uh, Lucy on the left hand side and a Joan as well. I actually I think Smilex is a strong core composition at the start, not showing a ton of their composition and not, you know, it, it's kind of hard to ban out against this. So just ban out the thing that's really strong, ban out that Zul, but. I'll say this, Vesper I like plays the insanely. I, Vesper plays an insanely strong Chen on Dragonshire. I've actually oh yeah, seen, that's we were, true. We were talking about this on Monday during our uh, Best of Five yeah. show match in house, and I was talking about you know the keg Ws coming out from <laughs> Vesper and utilizing that to actually zone enemy heroes away and still channel the top lane and hold them back. Once they have that channel, they just sit there and drink brew. If it's post thirteen, you've got enough to share your shielding, and in a one v one matchup in a solo lane with no Leork, no Malthiel, pretty easy for a Chen. But definitely to be banned on the left hand side. A little bit of a target ban there on Turk, right? Yeah, we saw definitely. in season one in CCL, he, he really oh, enjoyed yeah. that Deathwing and, and did really well with it. So uh, I, I like that they're kind of shutting him out of that. And again, that, that comes back to the global that I was talking about before, right? Um, you know, having that global on this map, being able to fly around, being able to be a little bit of everywhere. Uh, we see the Lunar and the uh, Leork picked up. I, I like Leork on the map. He's definitely a, a really good dueler against the Chin. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be able to drain him down. 
Um, as well as that Lunara, just some nice poke damage. Uh, a little keg W in the chat, yeah. We'll see what this last pick is, though. I, I'm not really sure. You, you know, you want something safe. You want something that kind of badgers that garage. Yeah, we still also need a pick from Turkish Delight, too. I'm wondering what they'll round their, their draft out. Maybe a mage, something like a Kael'thas or a Jaina would be impactful for them. But Sylvanas grabbed on the left-hand side for Smilers. What do we have, though, last hmm. pick out from Turkish Delight? Uh, I, I, as I said, like, I like... Actually, Ghoul Dan wouldn't be horrible. It's damage over time stacked on top of damage over time. Lucio can break that down and maybe heal through it, so... Might not work out for them, but it's it's a possibility. Also, Ghoul Dan's poke, the Echo Corruption, you get a lot of that. Maybe this is this is kind of that mobility slot that I was talking about too. Oh before, yeah, right? true. Um, something like a Mev or mm -hmm. the Kiara. He played Trick, trick played Kiara earlier. Hanzo. Hanzo. Okay. Okay, so pretty good comps here from both teams. Okay, so everyone's got it. I'm gonna hit ready, and once the players are ready, we'll be able to get going into our uh, our game number. Potentially five. for the marbles, right? For five hundred and twenty-five dollars in the prize pool, and, and the bits well, first place, and and the bits and. All that good stuff. So if you wanted to donate towards these streamers, now this might be the last game that we potentially have this evening. But we just got to wait for the readies up from both sides, and we'll get going into our Dragonshire map. Overall, Mac, uh, both teams actually had really good drafts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 you know, that that's. I was hoping that this would go this way. Like, I don't know if anyone's disadvantaged necessarily, but we see, like, you know, what we get blessed with is things like, we're seeing Trixler on Chin, right? Uh, we're going to get to see uh, Turk on Sylvanas, right? So mm -hmm. originally, we would have seen them on their comfort picks. We would have seen them on the Leoric. We would have seen them on the, um, you know, on the Hanzo, right? So now we're, we're getting to see these players play characters that they may not have signed up for, right? Uh, and we'll see how well, they, how well they're able to execute uh, as we're hopping now into Dragonshire, game number Dra five. Dragonshire. Also, you know what's you know what's really, like I've casted. I feel like a lot of Liam from S from from in-house games from just watching you know CCL and and all, different stuff. I don't think I've rare. I don't think I've ever seen them on Leoric. Really? Just I like I don't like I can't remember a time when I've seen them on Leoric because typically it's like Malfiel, Urel, Chen. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like maybe maybe once or twice it's popped up, but I honestly don't. It is it. not a character. I don't think you're. I think you're right. It's not a character he's very practice on. Mm -mm. Even oh, back here. when like I was laning against Liam way back in the day, I don't think we ever had him on Leo. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let's let's hop into the game. So we got Smilers here. Uh, Liam's gonna be on the Leoric Moon on the Hanzo. A big scoop on the Garage. Uh, we have Alora on. Actually, her Lunar, which is really great, and Lake Fu's going to be playing them off here. In I saw that in the draft, and I was like, "Oh, Lura's going to like this swap." But either <laughs> way, Turkish Delights on the right hand side, going to be trying to close out our best of seven show match. We've got Mockery on the Gray Main. The Turk is going to be on Sylvanas. Kyberry is on that Lucio. We've got Trixler on the Chen, and we have Leon Black on the Joanna. We can go ahead and check out our mid lane matchup as this is Moon already trying to get those auto attacks in. They do have the uh, simple geometry at level one. Garrosh going into the Warbreaker and Ch and Lucio with the party mix. As Sylvanas gets a massive haunting wave back towards their front gate and Big Scoop is getting very low. Moon gets a great agility over the wall and it seems like this is going to be a bit of a back and forth, mostly going in favor for Turkish Delights as they're going to walk away with the majority of the health and pressuring out the lane. I like there too, like, you see Trick was thinking about heading bottom and he's act he might actually, ooh, it was, it was so close. He almost got punished for that, right? He didn't, he's he's not built to just head top immediately, right? He's, he's mostly a ranged player. He sometimes plays the Merc in the off lane. Um, but we almost saw a punish there from Liam being able to kind of catch him on the rotation. I'm not really sure how that matchup even goes though, if we're being honest. And we see at level one picked up S Storm Stout Secret Recipe. Mm -hmm. So Chin heals for 3.5% of his maximum health when basic abilities hit enemy hero. And I assume he's going to be smacking some barrels here on to that Lee work to kind of sustain himself in this lane. So, so it'll be an interesting matchup for sure. But in the bottom lane, we actually see an invasion happening coming out from Smilers. Feeling confident with that garage pick. Very difficult for the Joanna. She has to... Oh, wow. That's... Okay. Yeah, that was... He threw... I was going to say it's, it's kind of difficult at times for the Joanna to... Hold that position. She only has her shield, and if you push it out, then Grosh kind of can, can control her from there. But Big Scoop making a heads-up play, throwing the giant into the four, and just kind of picking up the objective that way. So, mm -hmm. Leoric's gonna hold over top lane. I think like into a Chen. It really depends on how aggressive Leoric will be. And 
le I was watching Vesper just kind of sidestep a lot of the, the keg smashes and the flame breath coming out from Trixler, who was using them to clear wave, obviously, but still, uh, it's just still kind of avoiding that damage and not allowing them to get any sort of that healing back off of it. I expect Leork to play aggressive into into a Chun, especially because they're going to be sitting and drinking for a bit. But we have so many fights breaking out across the map. We'll try and keep up to date with all this information. So it is going to be Neil Peasants from Leork at level 4 for that faster wave clear. And actually, Chen pushing up this top lane. Yeah, it's going to be a Wraith walk out from Vesper. They're, they're actually having to play this back a little bit. But you and I talked about the value of actually giving over the front gate in top lane. Big Scoop taking a lot of damage and Mockery oh. finds the kill. First blood over to the side of Turkish Delights. Turk taking a lot of damage there from Laura though. She's feeling pretty confident here on her auto attacks, you can see, as we lose that top lane. Leon getting very close. He does sidestep that route very good. Same with Kai there. They're able to get out of there. The poison ticking still, but it looks like Leon is going to be able to survive, take down that easy camp. But yeah, trick tricking the top lane, you know, using that level one talent. I think as this matchup... Oh, we might see a little tango here mid, but as the matchup continues to progress, I, I do believe Leowork starts to become a little more advantage. Um, it becomes a game of mana at that point, but the drain talents do give Chen a, a little hard time. Uh, so I did like the mockery did take the hard camp right there, utilizing that Grameen well to get that pressure top, but the DK does go to the Smiler side. Um, and we see Smiler's is honestly off to the start here on this bottom lane, just taking down the wall while Turkish Delight deals with his DK. Uh, it's a little early, but let's jump into Turkish Delight's comms to see how they're defending against this. <clears throat> Yo, they keep pushing. Chen can rotate. Uh, they're still pushing. I think right. you can come down for the 5v4 here out of Dragon. On the way. We gotta win this, though. Yeah, we got it. This is big. This is big. This is big. Indomitable down. Indomitable yeah, down. Garrosh no is super low. Garrosh is on And Garrosh is also super low. Just slow on him. Shit, I'm so low. Healing, 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 healing. Yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. Moonfair yeah, jumped. Moon jumped. Hey, no one's killing this garage. I'm on my way. Ah, he's gone. Wow, Where, where'd you go? I don't know. I, I thought he was dead for some reason. And then I took my E, which I sent towards the enemy team. Yeah. MB, 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 MB. MB. I think they, oh, they they were a little split there on that call, right? You yeah. can tell Leon really wanted to focus on the Garrosh. And, oh, we see Turk actually getting taken down here from the Leoric. But yeah, you can really see, oh, maybe even some more kills. Moon with a nice scatter shot off the wall. You could see Leon really wanted to take down the Garrosh. Everyone assumed the Garrosh was dead, but then you had Mockery and Turk both going after that backline, right? The Malfurion was a little caught out, but not under too much pressure outside of the, the, the Grey main, kind of autoing her down. So, overall, it's not terrible. You know, the fort is still up, right? That experience that they would gain from that passive uh, experience is, is not there yet. And Mockery is able to sneak this easy camp as well. Um, just kind of protect that fort the best that they can down here. They're about uh, a level. There's about a bit, half a level lead in favor for the members of Smilers right now. They're going to try and take a fight in this bottom lane. Doesn't look like it's going to be happening. Top lane, Tricks are going to be forcing back Vesper, but once again, they're going to be sidestepping a lot of the, the ability damage coming out to avoid that Storm Brew value for that Chen. Toss away onto Leon Black. Big Scoop does not want to deal with this team fight as they're. Uh, and they're and you, this is actually a really smart call coming out from Turkish Light. They want to fight, find a team fight and take a team fight before the enemy team's hitting 10. Mm -hmm. That way they could potentially get some experience back in their favor. That's going to be Moon getting, Moon getting slowed there right there. They have to pop the the iron skin on this Joanna, and they're gonna have to back off right there. Meanwhile, just jumping in the top lane, Trixler getting very low. They're gonna try and drink through the pain. Vesper oh, does have a wraith. They actually wraith wow. through the gate. They get the slap with the mop, and they find a kill in top lane. Uh, great play there from Liam. Honestly, you know, maybe he does know the character. He was able to hit the drain. He had the confidence to eat through the wall and chase after. Um, just Trick needs to be a little more careful about his health pool, right? He, he, he's obviously probably getting bullied a bit there as the Leork now has the level seven talent to, you know, increase the range of his drain and, and it's harder for Chin to get away from that. Allura actually oh. getting caught in the rotation. Pop goes the weasel. Uh, that yeah, that was so much damage and bullet is actually taking here a level ten from the Grey Man. They are trying to chase them down, but they don't really have any engage right outside of maybe Kai moving them a little bit closer. I got the movement you off. speed. Go ahead. We got Keg. Picked up by Chen, but not only oh, that, no. we got Falling Sword from Joanna as well. Like, we rarely, if ever, see Falling Sword. Liam giving the. Oh my, Leon is actually going to die for the backline onto Mithras. They're going to be looking to try and get the kill into Hansa. They managed to do so. Falling Sword getting 
tons of value as the break it down, or excuse me, the sound barrier used by the Lucia right there. They're gonna stop the channel to the Dragonite. Meanwhile, Chen is back up in top lane. I, like, I was like, oh man, they're just memeing with Falling Sword, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it gets value because they're able to dive into the back lane. Turk has no mana, needs to get out of there, but strong pickup. Yeah, Malfurion hates Joanna's jumping on top of his head. So I think it's it's pretty strong here, right? And it opens up, it gives them that engage. If anything, it it, it puts the Joanna behind the enemy team and then allows the Lucio and friends to kind of push in on the front side of the team. Uh, at times, it's hard to get past the garage when you just kind of lumbering and standing in the front. So I, I like to pick up here. It, it's you're not going to get much from Bless Shield, right? And just being able to get onto the backline targets and harass and split the enemy team is such an insanely yeah. impactful tool for your, for, for well, for just, for even just the Joanna itself. So right now it's, we're looking at a Dragonite potential pickup, but the Curse Ball just thrown out to the big scoop. They will be hit by that one. Leon Black going to get some shield glare onto these Siege Giants. And I think this is just wave clear. No one able to get the Dragonite just yet as I want to peek into top lane to see how this fight's going between Vesper and Trixler. Vesper's... He's running out of mana. Now. He's running out of mana. I think that's a big thing here too. The Joanna Unstoppable is down. Allura's playing pretty confidently. He, Moon connecting lots of damage on Kai. She should be able to sustain that up, but I think this opens up the DK unless Trick has something to say about it. I like his damage here. He can maybe opt to Keg W. Uh, Dragonite's got. Yeah, the Dragon has been taken. So second one it's, of the That's game. those windows, too, that you were talking about, right? With the barrel, right? We could have used it there. Oh, Malfurion's taken down in the bottom lane. Good kill. That was probably a falling sword, if I had to guess. Uh, with it on a 34 second cooldown, yeah, I would definitely say so. Yeah. Second Dragonite, though, of the game, that's two in a row. I mean, we are still eight minutes into this game. This Dragonite is going to be auto attacking for 600 and, or excuse me, 266 damage. I was about to say, like, if, if they were actually doing for 600 this early <laughs> in the game, that'd be absolutely wild. Wait but a second. Lunar is, is going to try and push up this bottom lane. Leon Black coming down here just to just to push them back. Actually, using the, the Wisp from Alora to, to just tank shots from the tower so they can step up and get a couple autos into that tower. They did go into Nature's, excuse me, Nature's Calling at level 4, so they do have that increased damage from the Nature's Toxin. Dragonite mid lane will find a keep. Falling Sword coming out from Leon. That's going to be onto Big Scoop. Gr Gr Gray Mane dives out and they find a kill onto Garrosh. And the dragon, oh wow, great play there from the Turk diving, dodging the headbutt there from the dragon. And Moon's gonna hop out here. I don't know if he's safe. The Joanna's W's been used. A nice arrow does connect. Kai going in for her ult. She's not able to get it down though. Turk's so low. I'm, yeah, uh, good play from Allura there to hop twice over and take Turk out. Uh, man, I was so close on Kai's ultimate there. Uh, if, she, if she had gotten the heroic off that sound barrier, we would have been in big business. Could, can uh, we show can we show stats once again? Control two, because I just looked at Leoric. Leoric's almost at a hundred thousand. No. <laughs> in man. siege damage. Oh, it's ninety nine thousand. Ten minutes into the game, as they pop it in two months, tricks are going to be using <laughs> the uh, uh, drain hope as well. They're just oh, trying to drink goodness. through the pain. They're actually tanking. T oh no, no, the mini wave. The here. thirteen, the thirteen from Leoric oh, is also wandering keg. Yeah, yeah, that was a good good keg there to kind of give him some space. Yeah, that 13 talent on the Leoric now, right? Reducing the cooldown on the drain, uh, mm -hmm. especially if it lasts the full duration. So it's going to be on Trick to kind of do what he did there, right? Use the, use the minions. Try to use 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 the environment around them to hop away. Um, he's got to break the gap somehow. He can't just let the Leoric W over and over because he will continue to W over and over. Or possibly, you know, even attempt to just sidestep it, right? He's, he's got to figure out a way to to figure that out. Otherwise, the Leoric's going to hit 16 here, and I, I believe at 16 he gets the crunch on Drain, where if the whole yes. Drain goes through, it crunches, yep. and then that's going to be big damage. They do decide to go into that. Um, I I haven't seen many hybrid builds. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah it, if, if they're going into Spectral Leech, they're going into Spectral Leech, like, or Drain Hope, excuse me. Spectral Leech, I believe, is, is when, you're, when you're dead, but 16's up on both sides. Siege camp going to be worked on by Allura, and there'll be bottom lane pressure coming out from them. Leoric going to be coming into top lane to actually gain control, giving over that front gate. But they realize, oh, it's 10 seconds. I could I could get one at least <laughs> skeletal swing through this right now. And uh, I'm just watching across the minimap to see if we have anyone starting out in a fight. And it seems like they're just playing it safe. Maybe the big fight's going to be happening over these control points. I think the, the biggest thing here is is going to be, you know, how, how well does... 
Turkish delights kind of use the Sylvanas advantage, right? They, they kind of need to bring that chin off of that top lane, and just sacrifice that and try to get gains and wins elsewhere on the map, mm -hmm. um, especially now as that chin is slowly losing his advantage, right? I'd like to see him come down, use the keg, maybe pick up some kills as we see him possibly thinking about it. He's making sure he gets a little bit of extra drink in his lips before he jumps in. Moon's caught out by the barrel, but there is no follow-up trick. He might have himself caught out here. Oh. A good Hanzo arrow from Moon, taking a lot of damage. He does go down. Kai was looking for the heroic there, possibly as well. Mockery into, maybe he'll jump over. He goes into the Allura, turning in. A nice silence. Wailing arrow from Turk. Falling Sword is going to connect on the Lake Food. Big Scoop taking a lot of damage. Mockery about 10% health. He does roll away just in the nick of time. Leon just kind of playing up here. Turk taking, nice scatter from Moon to take down Mockery. Turk taking his E into the enemy team, but turns out that Garage has about 41 armor right now and had about 49 Turk when he decided to take that E. And he uh, is... Wait a second. Moon is... Lu Lucio had murky. half their health and then didn't. Um, yeah. Moon currently has um, 49,000 heroic damage. On the opposing side, the closest is 29,000. He just hit about like four or five scatters back to back, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, that Looks was like a, a DK massive. too. That's third one of the game. Third one of the Oof. game and third one of in a row. Uh, Smiler is really benefiting from the swap on our uh, drafts here. And it's, I mean, it's 19 to 17, a solid two level lead for the Smilers as they're looking to go back up in our best of seven series. I mean, if, if, if there was ever a time to reverse sweep, it's now. Mm hmm. This is like Moon said, if they just play normal games of heroes, then his team should win, right? That's that is what he said. And this is about as normal as it gets. The compositions are switched a little bit, but everyone's playing some pretty standard comps. Trick's actually looking out at Moon. He does jump in. Headbutt comes out from the garage as well to kind of put me Trick back. A nice side step on the arrow. He's got Laura out, but turns out Laura can use her leaping strike to unstoppable away twice. Getting herself out of harm's way. Trick jumping back in, taking a lot of damage here. Moon's just going to play in here. A nice sound barrier, but I don't think that there's any way he's getting out. The chase has begun for Moon. Is that a movement speed at 13? That is. And this whole time, Liam has been pushing in mid, almost taking that fourth down or keep down all the way to 30%, about 40%. Dragon Knight coming in. We're just splitting pressure here, right? Mm -hmm. I actually really like when one teams run this, like splitting the pressure into the Dragon Knight phase really helps you. So you're able to potentially get more than just one structure. This mm -hmm. should be bottom lane keep. Dragon Knight has eight seconds left on it. They might, oh, Allura on the far side of this, uh, this keep, but there's really no one that can capitalize on a kill. So they end up just walking to the other side and they might go for mid lane fort. No, they're going to be chasing onto Mockery who oh. gets caught in the in tomb and they get picked off staggering out of death. That's a bad time for that one right there. As it appears, we are just going to get a lot of letters from Mockery. <laughs> uh, they might have been rolling their face across the keyboard as they died, but Sylvanas gets picked off right there. Falling Sword from Leon, not going to be connecting onto anyone. And it's a 12-7 kill game. They're looking to continue to pressure in mid lane on the side of the Smilers. Yeah, they're just <laughs> easy out. <laughs> Looks like they're just running it down mid now. They have that 20 advantage, right? They just need to slowly make their way towards that core damage. Uh, two dead. Uh, it shouldn't really be too much of an issue. They kind of need to worry about Trick doing something like this. But they have so much range and space on him. He, even in his keg form, he's, he's just oh. taking so much damage. He does stagger. A good sound barrier is going to keep him alive. But, you know, it's going to force the enemy back in their base trick does go down anyways and it looks like smilers on the come up lunara the game number five the core <laughs> just floating a reindeer of sorts <laughs> maybe get a job with santa <laughs> i i mean they might have not liked the, the shenanigans, but I honestly, <laughs> I loved them. I love the shenanigans. I, I had a blast with that one. Uh, Darkshear, thank you for donating. Um, Caster Math is kicking in, but we're going to say upwards of 500 bits. Thank you so much for that. Very much appreciated. 